this is just a short video uh, showing you how to load up and thread uh, one of the older styled sewing machines this is a single 413 uh, they was made around about 1972 to 75 which makes them roughly 40 years old what happens with these things is your granny or your mum or in my case your granddad no longer uses them uh, they get passed down to other family members and then put in the loft and forgotten about it's a pity really because in some respects I prefer these to the modern machines they're a lot more solidly built they're a lot quieter running and they don't bounce all over the place the nice and stable little machines anyway when you're loading up the spool the first thing you've got to do is disengage the clutch that means holding on to this and operated wheel and turning the inside one anti-clockwise only about half a turn maybe maybe less that then disengages the drive so that the needle is not flying up and down whilst you're loading this spool up there is a small hole on the spool uh, I don't know if you can oh yeah that small hole though there's one on one side and there's also one on the other side it doesn't matter which one you use but what you need to do when you've threaded all this lot up I'll show you what that all's for first thing to do put your cotton on one of these uh, carriers it doesn't matter which one and then bring it across just here there's a small spring loaded button It's spring loaded so that so there's a little bit of tension whilst this is um, loading up it just keeps the required tension on that reel what you do now pull some thread across feed that thread up through that hole that I mentioned earlier on and put it onto the spindle like so now there's two ways of in, uh, there's two ways of engaging this spindle. You can either just push it across, or you have a knob here that does exactly the same thing. This arm, this arm here that is um, sticking out, is adjustable. The reason that that's adjustable is it can determine the amount of cotton that's going onto the reel. I'll just keep it on minimum for the time being while we're just doing this. I don't want to waste any cotton okay now what you do when you've got all that set up like so just put your foot on the switch and and away you go once you've got a few turns on like that just snip that off then it doesn't get caught everywhere right I like to keep your finger on the top of that not applying any pressure to stop it from bouncing up because they can these particular uh, bobbins of cotton do have a tendency to bounce up into the earth now you'll see what happens when the cotton reaches that arm it's stopped what it's done actually the cotton has forced that away so that it's no longer in in uh, contact with the drive wheel that's enough for us right take that off there and we'll now load it into the bobbin holder uh, this plate here pulls back like so and inside of the uh, underneath the plate you'll see this uh, like a carrier that's what it is actually it actually carries uh, the bobbin now the bobbin itself needs to be in a position so that the cotton comes off it in that direction an anti-clockwise direction so that when you hold it like that let's see if we can get a better shot hold it like that it's making the letter P P and then that goes into the like so in this particular bobbin holder or, or most of these that are a, are, are a top loader one you've got two slots you've got one just there and one just there these two slots pick up the cotton just pull it across like that out the way 
and then when you bring it back if you can see it's automatically dropped into that first slot and as you pull it it automatically goes over to the second slot now all that you need to do now is pull that cotton across and it's dropped into that second slot that's all there is to loading that bobbin up now let's push that clip down you push that closed it doesn't trap the cotton because uh, I don't know if you can see it properly or not but just here there's a slot and that slot is there to allow the cotton to move backwards and forwards as much as you want okay that's that now what we have to do next is uh, load the machine up to actually put the top stitch on to load the machine up we put the cotton bobbin back on one of those uh, carriers there again it doesn't matter which one the reason that there's two is because this will run with twin threads there's two tension plates down here as well I'll show you them it's just this particular model now feed the cotton underneath that carrier there it's just like a small hole I'll get a close up of that when you've got that just bring your cotton down there like so it goes in behind this bar and then under one of those pressure plates now to do this properly you've got to have your presser foot up because raising your presser foot actually takes the tension off them tension plates so what we will do is go around the tension plate and then just just here there's a small spring right and just to the uh, there we go. see just a small spring there and then there's a small hoop there and what you do you bring your cotton round make sure that it's in the slot of one of the pressure plates I like to put my finger on the top there and just lift that entire lot up so that what happens like so it locates behind the hook and is underneath that spring so once you've got your cotton underneath that spring and behind that hook what you've got to do then is re-engage the drive at the back of the machine if you remember rightly that knob there I'll just tighten it up <sighs> yeah so that's now nice and tight so it's holding okay you turn your knob at the back this uh, this wheel at the back here turn it until that arm reaches the very very top of its travel uh, why it's at the top of its travel you then feed the cotton through like so what we do now is thread up the machine through the cotton carriers right that is now fed up through that cotton carrier there's also another one I don't know if you can see it or not just here just above the needle right it also goes through that one like so now to get the cotton up from the bottom spool up to the top just lightly grip the cotton that's gone through the needle and then turn this knob again in that direction so that it drives the needle down like so and what will happen is it will pick up that cotton there and now we've got the cotton from underneath 
the machine basically is now ready for stitching uh, let's give it a try what have I got to try it with uh, here we are that's four layers of old shirt fabric four layers is quite thick but it this machine should take it quite easily uh, I've got it on zigzag at the moment so I'll switch it to straight stitch number four which is the largest stitch available on this machine it's quite a large stitch actually you'll see and it should go bring the needle up to its furthest travel lift your lift your presser foot and snip and there you go that's not a bad little stitch we've got good tension for the top not so good tension for the bottom that right if you have a look it's not really pulled through on that what we would have to do is to increase the top tension to about six six and a half and that would then give us an even one I'll do that up to the maximum travel if you press the foot out that comes then you can just cut that away there you go now then if you have a look at that top row of stitching right and then the top row of stitching on that side you see they're identical that means that you've got the pressure right on on this as well okay basically that's it uh, I can't think of anything else really oh yeah on the top here with some of them these dials that you've got at the top here are for the amount of pressure that you can put onto the presser foot there's a couple of good tutorials on um, on the online that you can go and have a look at which will give you all of them details that you need this is just basically for getting the machine ready for stitching okay that's it thank you for uh, watching I hope you get some use out of it. Bye.